Hey everyone, this is Nurse Ryan, and today we're going to be talking about the drug codeine. You can use the timestamps in the video description to jump ahead. Codeine belongs to the opioid agonist drug classification, which means that it binds to and activates opioid receptors, which are found in the central nervous system, or CNS. Here is an example of an empty opioid receptor that can be found throughout the CNS. Codeine would bind to this receptor and trigger opioid effects. Opioids can cause generalized central nervous system depression, which may result in sedation or decreased level of consciousness, and respiratory depression or slowed breathing. Part of where opioids act is directly in the brainstem's respiratory centers, located in the medulla and the pons. This is why opioids can cause respiratory depression. They can also cause feelings of euphoria, analgesia or pain relief, decreased GI motility, and more. Codeine is used in the management of mild to moderate pain, typically for pain that is unresponsive to non-opioid analgesics. Codeine can also be used as an antitusive, which means that it can help prevent or relieve a cough. This is because of how codeine works in the brain. Remember, codeine acts directly in the brainstem's respiratory centers located in the medulla and the pons, and here it also suppresses the cough center by acting in the medulla. Keep in mind that cough suppressants should be used carefully in productive coughs. Productive coughs help to clear mucus and other gunk away from the airway, and if we suppress a productive cough too much, that mucus can build up in the airway which we really don't want. It is very common to compare different opioid potencies to that of morphine. Morphine is kind of like the baseline for opioid conversions. Be aware that codeine's potency is approximately 6 to 10 times weaker than that of morphine. For example, 10 milligrams of codeine would only be about 1 to 1.5 milligrams of morphine. Some common adult doses for codeine are 10 to 20 milligrams every 4 to 6 hours for cough, and about 15 to 60 milligrams 3 to 4 times a day for pain. Always start with lower doses and increase slowly as instructed by the healthcare provider. Like we mentioned, opioids can cause respiratory depression, which can be life-threatening. It is one of the major side effects that we look out for. Be aware that constipation is also an important side effect to look out for with opioids, due to its effect of causing decreased GI motility. Also, like we mentioned, opioids cause CNS depression. Side effects may manifest as dizziness, headache, sedation or decreased level of consciousness, confusion, hallucinations, and more. Other side effects include drug dependency, urinary retention, dry mouth, nausea, and more. CNS depression may worsen if used with other CNS depressants such as alcohol, antidepressants, antihistamines, and more. Monoamine oxidase inhibitors, or MAOIs for short, may also increase the effects of opioids, increasing the risk for CNS and respiratory depression. It is important to discontinue MAOIs 14 days prior to starting opioids. And these are just some of the possible interactions with opioids. Avoid use in clients with GI or bowel obstruction. Also avoid use in clients with acute or severe respiratory distress, such as untreated asthma attacks. Opioids have been linked to adrenocortical insufficiency, so caution should be exercised in clients who already have adrenal insufficiency. Precaution should also be used in clients with head injuries or increased intracranial pressure. We would monitor carefully for sedation and respiratory depression in these clients. As with most medications, avoid use in clients with renal or hepatic dysfunction. Keep in mind that these are just some of the contraindications and precautions of opioids. Opioids are considered high-risk or high-alert medications. It is important to be aware of the policies and procedures regarding high alert medications in your area. Independent double checks may be required when preparing opioids to avoid errors when administering high alert medications. It is typical to hold opioids and notify the provider if respiration rate is below baseline, usually less than 12 respirations per minute, due to the side effect of respiratory depression. Increase hydration and bulk forming foods to reduce the risk of constipation. As with many medications, it is important not to discontinue opioids abruptly, but to instead gradually taper the dose according to the provider's instructions to reduce the risk of withdrawal symptoms and severe pain. In the event of opioid overdose, an opioid antagonist, such as naloxone, also known as Narcan, can be used to prevent further opioid binding to the opioid receptors. Naloxone often comes as a nasal spray or as an injection. And that's about it for the basics of codeine. If this video has helped you out, please consider leaving a like and subscribe, I would really appreciate it. If you have any questions or would like me to review a specific drug or topic, please let me know in the comments, and thanks for watching.